everybody, what's up? How's it going? Uh, how's your week shaping up? Jeez, we're in August. It's August. Before we get to the show, I want to tell you guys something. Um, first, uh, I just got back from a road trip. Nine days on the road, left San Diego, and ended up on the Oregon border. So we just we cruised up the you know up the coast, which is really fun, really cool, really cool to get out, get in the redwoods, get a change of scenery. But I don't want to waste your time telling you about my road trip. Um, again, it is August, and I want to share something with you guys. You know, regardless of how your year's coming along, I want you to think about something, and it's this. The next 60 days is critical for your business, right? It's August, and think about it. Just do the math for a second, right? August, September, we get into October, right? Kids are settling into school. We got Halloween coming up. November, we have Thanksgiving, and then and then it's, you know, that we're in the holidays. And then... January. Well, what happens in January, right? Everybody in January is they're working, they're focusing on their New Year's goals, which they're going to abandon in, you know, a hot 12 days. But they're, you know, they're thinking about themselves and they're thinking about taxes in April. And if, and, and that's that, right? So what you do in the next 60 days in your business will shape literally the next nine months. So I know it's tempting to, to get out on the beach and, and waste a couple of days, but, uh, but don't. You guys really focus. Use this next 60 days um, to really, really dig into your business. Sun up to sunrise. Sun or sunrise to sunset. Anyhow, that's enough of my rant for you guys. Real quick, before we get to the show, I got to tell you, I shared this on a, a few episodes ago. And by the way, I didn't release any episodes the time that I was on the trip. And I come back, I look at our stats, holy smokes, we we literally got to like number 52 uh, in iTunes, 52 in the world for the business category. So that, that uh, that's all you guys, so I appreciate it. Um, I love new people finding the show, and if you're new, uh, welcome. Okay, all right, enough of that. I'm going to tell you about something, then we're going to get into the show. Here's what I'm going to tell you about. Scout Media, the low-hanging fruit out there right now is Facebook ads. Now, here's what we're doing. As you guys know or should know, right, we put people on the radio and television. We have a method. We are crushing it for our radio clients. What we're able to do on Facebook is completely replicated. We, we take the same, we target the same demographic, right? We focus on the same kind of placement. We use the same kind of copy. So, uh, if you want to add a and, and here, well, hold, let me tell you something else. Here's the thing, right? Fortune 500 companies, when they think about marketing, you know what they think about? They're, they're quite, the, one of the questions they ask is, what is our mobile digital strategy? Have you guys asked yourself that? Have you guys asked yourself, what is our mobile strategy? Hey, what is our digital strategy? Uh, and if you haven't, uh, you need to call your Uncle Toby. I'll help you out. All right. Um, but yeah, Scout Media, if you, guys, if you guys want to level up, get listings, replicate our radio model online, and want to actually have a mobile, mobile digital strategy, uh, send me an email. We, still, we're, we haven't even built out the Scout. I can't even talk. We haven't built this site for Scout Media. We're in the process. But uh, you g- give me a call, send me an email, I'll, and I'll tell you about it. All right, let's get to it. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. Today on the show, um, look, you guys know I very rarely have a guest on for a second appearance. Um, although, I, I got to tell you, I've been getting emails lately, and people, people have been saying, hey, you should do a part one and part two uh, with this or that person. So, um, uh, you know, why don't you do this, guys? If you have some favorites that you have, you know, send me an email, and I'll, we'll reach back out and have those guys on. Now, today is today's returning champion. 
Um, you know, we had him on early, early on, and I've gotten uh, I've gotten to know this guy over the last few years. Uh, good, good guy. Um, he is obviously in real estate, but this guy's like the classic entrepreneur. He's done all sorts of stuff from being an investor, you know, operating different companies, founding a group. We'll talk about that a little bit. Um, he's a real estate giant, and, and he's an adventurer. This guy, this guy does all sorts of crap from you know, all around the world. Um, all right. His name. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, you know, look, I didn't know how to introduce him. I normally say I'm thrilled to. Uh, I didn't know how to introduce him. But listen, my guest today, Mr. Pat Hyben. Pat, thanks for taking the time out. Toby, my pleasure. This is going to be fun. So listen, Pat, um, um, for those of you who don't know you, um, who should know you, uh, take a minute, tell us a little bit about, about who you are, and then we'll dig into all the stuff you're doing. Uh, that's that's a great question, you know, and, and uh, I don't know if, if you've ever done this, Toby, but recently I had the privilege of uh, helping uh, kind of, because you're not really supposed to help, uh, put together a Wikipedia page for Pat Hyben. Yeah. It's kind of a cool thing to do. And um, and uh, so it was really de- delved down to who in the hell am I, right? You know, like who am I? What have I become? I just turned 50 and uh, I got into real estate uh, when I was 21. I went to uh, college, got a degree in sociology. I couldn't get a job that seemed to want to pay me or hire me right away. So I became an agent, uh, not by design at all, just kind of the universe took over and uh, never left the business. Um, <clears throat> still have a team in uh, Columbia, Maryland with my partner, Mike Sloan. Mike runs it. And uh, is on a very uh, is on a high split, and then uh, uh, we split fifty percent of the profits. And uh, he does everything. Um, and I have a second home in South Carolina, which we spend about two hundred days a year at, and about one hundred and sixty five or so in Maryland or on vacation elsewhere. And I have um, uh, many investments. And in about two thousand and ten, I wrote a book, Six Steps to Seven Figures. Um, and this is all on my Wikipedia page, but six steps to seven figures, a real estate agent's guide to building wealth and creating your destiny. And this, uh, hit the New York times bestseller. I've sold over 20,000 copies of it. Uh, probably 18,000 of those have been to real estate agents. Gary Keller of Keller Williams wrote the foreword for me. He was so gracious to do that. And, um, and it's been a, been a big hit. I went on tour for that, finished the tour for that. Then started my podcast, uh, Pat Hyben Interviews Real Estate Rockstars, um, and, uh, and now I'm building a product on uh, listing appointments where I've actually sat down with eight of the top, top real estate agents in the world and, um, and had them go over their listing appointment with me uh, second by second. Uh, both role playing and and both analyzing it like a Monday morning uh, football team does to the game from Sunday, and um, and so that's that's basically it. That's, that's awesome. uh, me, me in a nutshell. Yeah, I want to talk about all that stuff. So I, I first want to talk about about why you chose sociology and and to, to kind of set you up. I can tell you that I went to UCSD, you know, here in San Diego, and I dual majored in sociology and religious studies. And I can uh, let me tell you, let me tell you why I did that, and I want to know why why you chose that. I wanted to know for those of people that don't know, right? Sociology is studying why people, you know, unlike psychology, but sociology is more like why do people do kind of what they do, right? And, and it, as, as not necessarily in groups, in yeah. groups, that's exactly right. Psychology is one, sociology is in groups. Now, so so I was like, okay, what do groups do? And then I wanted to to to, to uh, why I double majored in religious studies is I wanted to know you know why people will do stuff in groups and there may not be a good rational foundation for it. Um but for you, so what what drew you to sociology in that regard? Yeah, that's a great question and unfortunately it's not as romantic as as your reasons. I mean, essentially what happened is I went to college for 2 years and at the end of my sophomore year, I got a notice that said, you need to go see your counselor, right? Your, your advisor. And I go into the advisor's office. He's like, dude, you need to pick a major. He's like, you've got 60 credits or you're about to have 60, uh, you know, something credits. And uh, you can't have that many. You, you know, if you want to get on on time, you need to pick a major. So I was like, oh, crap. And uh I said, well, 
I don't want to spend, I don't want to, I can't afford to do five years of college. So what can you fit in, you know, with, in addition to the other electives and that sort of thing? And he goes, well, you can do history or you can do sociology and they're both 10 credits or 10 classes and you can get out on time. And, uh, I was like, oh, okay, well, history sounds boring. Sociology, boom. And I picked sociology and I graduated on time and that was that. Got it. Okay. And then you went into real estate. So so, you know, as you said kind of in the in the, in as you introduced yourself, I mean you 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 know, you have tons of investments and even it it, it seems to me uh, even even your current company with that you run with uh, with Mike, you, you almost treat like an investment. You know, you're not involved uh, so, so I uh, don't, don't talk about horizontal income yet. We're going to get there, but, but what is the, the way you, how have you been able to design your life in the sense that you have, I think 50 plus investments where you are people, uh, people run it for you, but you just get paid in the, in, 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 you know, you just get money in your mailbox. Uh, how talk to us a little bit about that. And then we'll get into horizontal. I know that's a big thing for you. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that's the great question. That's a great question. It's really the question behind the question is like, what does it take, right, to to do that? Because so many people want to basically just, you know, um, live off of passive income. I mean, uh, every real estate agent out there has a goal. I don't think has a goal that when they're 84 years old to be calling on FISBOs, right? I mean, they really think that they're going to be retired someday. And the reality of it is, is it's, it's expensive you know, we've created expensive lifestyles as agents and uh, we need to also create horizontal income or, or income or other things that support that. So the question behind the question is, I think I had to develop a distaste for work. Now, mm. the, 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 let me, you know, if you let that sink in, a distaste for work, I think that as agents, we develop a taste for work, hard work, hustle, um, whatever, you know, scraping and scrounging, whatever you want to call it, um, because it makes us money, right? We, we grind and then we make money, make big fat commission checks and it feels great. But, um, and what happens is just like the way that an agent stops working with buyers, so to speak, right? An agent is so stuck with working with buyers. They love buyers. They love showing houses. They love, oh, but I really want to build a team. And the only way a lot of them eventually get rid of all the buyer work is they develop a distaste for buyers. Like, mm. I hate working with buyers. I can't stand them anymore. You know, I don't want to ever put one in my car again. And then it becomes real easy to, once you develop that distaste. And I, so I think the same thing is true, you know, develop a distaste for trading time for money, mm. develop a distaste for it. And then you'll start creating intellectual property, things like my book or things like this listing thing that I'm building or things that um, like real estate that is going to – people are going to pay me rent and it's going to show up in my uh, mailbox every month. Um, I have not – I have a great taste for that, but I have a distaste currently for trading time for money unless yeah. – it's going to keep paying me into the future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's such a great point. That's such a great point. The 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 trading time for dollars, and even it doesn't matter in my mind, Pat. You know, even if you're trading, you know, even if you are you you make one hundred two, you know, um, well, a hundred bucks an hour, eight hours a day is about two hundred grand a year. Um, but even if you're trading, you know, um, you, you know, I remember the first year that I made a million dollars that I paid taxes on a million dollars. I was working like a freaking dog, but it was just it was, you know, I was trading time for money. It was a lot of money, but it was it was still the same thing. So that's interesting. So develop a distaste for that. Um, well, let, let me ask you this, because I know in terms of well, in terms of your investments, can you give us a, just a range of some of the stuff you've invested in? Because that's not all rental properties, right? Right, right. Well, I started out with rentals, and I sold a bunch, and I still have a bunch. And then I moved up to apartment buildings and commercial buildings, some good, some bad. And then I started uh, investing in people that I know who wanted to start their own small companies. And uh, so now I have about 16 small companies that I have venture backed, so to speak, or angel invested in. I have maybe five or seven notes, you know, um, loans that I get paid interest on. I have about, uh, you know, 
20 uh, rental properties and maybe another 20 uh, commercial properties I'm involved in. These are round numbers. I think sure. the last count was like 56 uh, total uh, forms of horizontal income that pay me sideways. My book is one, you know, um, things like that are sideways horizontal income sources. And that pretty much adds up to about 56 of them that pay me. And then, of course, you know, after about, say, 28 or 30, you know, they pay all my expenses. They pay all my family bills, including vacations. Then everything after that is just goes to savings so that I can invest more. Got it. Okay. So, so at at what, um, and I know you started, so not the, not the, you know, investment properties, but once you started getting outside of that and moving, moving upstream to apartment buildings or, you know, I know you've, you're invested in like some, some storage, uh, you know, um, you're, you got a lot of investment. At what point did you, what, what, how old were you when you really started, uh, understood the concept of horizontal income and when you first started making some investments in, in this regard? Well, um, you know, I think I kind of had an idea right away. I mean, when I was 23, I bought my first house and I rented out the basement and then I rented out uh, one of the rooms upstairs and then I just lived in it uh, for the remainder. And after the tax break, I essentially was living for free. So I, I think I kind of understood it there and I kind of understood it from an ego standpoint that I want to buy rentals because I know that that was a pathway to get rich. I don't think I really understood it until I met David Osborne, who was a um, you know mentor to me and a a, a great friend, uh, and we're still friends to this day, obviously. But um, you know, he was the one that actually sat me down and said, "Look at this! Look at this spreadsheet I have! I have eleven lines here, and they're all paying me sideways." He was one of the early pioneers of the Keller Williams uh, franchises and uh, he would buy Keller Williams offices. And, and, and I think he, at one point he had about seven ownership in about seven of the regions. And he was saying this region paid me. And this was like 15 years ago. You can only imagine uh, how they look today, but this region paid me this amount and this office paid me this amount. Oh, and I bought a rental property and paid me this amount. And it really opened my eyes to say, yeah, my head is going back and forth sideways. Right. It's not going up like the stock market. It's not going up and down in an S curve like the stock market. It's going sideways, sideways, back and forth like a yes, you know, like a like a no, you know, instead right. of a yes. It's yeah. opposite of what you, what you would think. But yeah. So anyway, so that's that's where it really sunk in is okay. when David showed me his spreadsheets. Yeah, and, and the re- here's the reason why I asked that is because you know we all kind of want to live that way. Um, most people don't know how to do it. And, and, you know, what is, what is Pat for that, you know, for that person? Uh, um, let me, let me try to build somebody out here. Right. So, uh, so a 35 year old guy, he's married, he's got two kids. Um, you know, he's, he's whatever, whether you're selling real estate or you're a chef, right. He's making 75 grand. Okay. Where can that guy, do you think, can he enter this market and start to build, lines like you have built? You know, I, I think that people create their own barriers and, and I get this, you know, people saying this all the time. Oh, you know, I can't, I can't buy a house in, in my market and do the 1% rule. And what 1% rule is, you know, you buy a house for a hundred grand, you want to get a thousand dollars a month in rent. It's, it's straightforward, right? It's, it's as simple as can be, right? Um, and I'll say, well, what about outside of your market? Oh, that's the ghetto. I don't want to go in there. Well, why not? Right? You know, I mean, you got to start somewhere, right? You're not Donald Trump, right. you know. Go buy a property and get it. Like um my daughter's boyfriend, right? He's 21 years old, wanted to get in the rental property game. So, he bought a ghetto property for $20,000. And he's fixing it up and he's probably going to rent it for like 450 bucks a month. Wow. You know, I mean, so that, you know, that's where you start, Toby. You know, okay. you don't say, oh, I can't do it in my market. Where Drive 90 minutes, right? right. Drive, you know, go to an area you might not be comfortable with. You know, bring a, a golf club or a baseball bat with you if you're scared. But, um, you know, just, um, 
you just do it. Right? Yeah, no, I agree. And I, 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 I so I, I think that's great advice for sure. Um, and you know, there, there are, uh, do you, have you heard of realty shares? I've heard of it. I, I don't know the yeah, intricacies. Th- but that's I right. There's a, have an idea. Yeah, there's a few different startups out there right now where, you, you, where what you can do is, you know, you want to invest in real estate. There's also uh, rooftops. Uh, I think rooftops. But there, more and more of these are popping up lately. And basically, you know, a, a realty shares is um, I have a deal of a flip or a, or a commercial piece of property. Um, I want to raise money for it. So I put the property out there, the, 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 the um, realty shares itself, the company vets me uh, as, the, as the investor, vets the project. They put it out there and they'll go, hey, you know, you can invest as little as $1,000 and get a 15% return. Um, and at least you're doing something, right? Because what I see, Pat, and I, I know you see it too, is everybody, everybody blames lack of money or lack of opportunity as the reason why they don't do this stuff. And I, and I, yeah. I tell everybody, man, there, there's opportunity and money everywhere. That's not your issue. Right, right. And, and, and their issue may be they're spending too much. I mean, I, right. I know several people that come to me on the regular, oh, yeah, I, my goal is to buy three houses this year, right? And then the year will pass and they haven't bought a single one. And then I'll, I'll be like, what happened? They'll be like, ah, oh, well, you know, I couldn't get 100% financing or this. And I'm like, dude, here's the thing. Maybe you're spending too much, right? Maybe instead of saving 5%, you should be saving 40%. Right. Right. And 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 then using that money to invest. It's not unheard of. I mean, that's kind of what I did. Right. I I saved my ass off before I started investing on a large scale. Yeah. I'll tell you this, man. And this is this is probably like mental of me, honestly. You know, and I've had I have a very complicated uh, relationship with money. Um, But but, you know, I remember when I first started making real money, like a hundred grand a month kind of money, you know, I make it a hundred grand a month and I, I had to go like I needed new socks. And I needed and some like new underwear. And I went down and I, and I, I bought like, I spent like a hundred bucks. I still remember this because, because somebody called me out on it. I spent like a hundred bucks, right? Again, I'm making about a hundred grand a month. I went down to wherever I went, Macy's or whatever, bought some socks and some underwear. And dude, I felt bad about it. And I was like, what the, f-? like, what's going on? Um, but again, like I've, it's taken me a long time to, to, you know, I had no prop, but again, but here's the other thing. I had no problems going out and spending a hundred thousand dollars the month before and buying a new Porsche, right? Cash. I didn't finance it, paid cash for it. Um, and it's just it, like, I didn't see, there's certain stuff that I didn't see value in, but I needed it. Um, I don't know that very, very, like, it's, it's weird. And it's never right. It's kind of like a business credit card versus a personal one. It's like, it's like, uh, you, you'll spend, you know, three days with your wife trying to pick out the right couch, but for, for say eight grand or five grand or whatever, but it, I'll, I'll talk to myself. I will right for five to eight grand. I'll spend, we'll spend all this time talking about colors and couches and did it at this deal going to three or four different stores. But when it comes to like buying something for the business and the, and the cost is five grand a month or three grand a month, which is $36,000 in a year, it's like, okay, no problem. I'll do it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> this is, yeah. Like, that's four times as much as a couch. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it's but weird. It's the same. Yeah. It's same money, thing. Right. You know? Same thing. Okay. So, 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 you know, um, so you started, you know, you built this, this real estate practice. You started to get tired of it. You started investing. You saw the, the value in that. Um, and then you want to, you, you I want to talk about your book. Um, because, you know, then you started to express yourself creatively. And this is something that, that, you know, you and I both see when it comes to successful people. You know, at some point, you know, they get tired of just doing their business and they, they have all these other ideas, right? And, and I, and I think, for me, and I, and I loved, I'm gonna, I'm telling you about me because I want to, I want you to jump in on it. For me, there was a time in my life where, where I felt like I had the Midas touch. No matter what I did, like it worked. And, and, and it was during that time, um, this is sort of my mid thirties that, that I was doing all sorts of stuff. Um, what, what, about you, about your life, did you then start to turn to uh, intellectual property and say, listen, I want to get these ideas out to the world? Was that a personal, you know, was that just you saying, I want to do something different? Or was that, was it, did you have some sort of deliberate idea or notion uh, uh, around that? Yeah, no, it was definitely conscious. I mean, like I, I, you know, I tell a story about how, 
you know, this was probably seven, eight years ago now, but um, a good friend of mine had died, right? He got uh, kidney cancer and it was unexpected. He gave him like six weeks to live and he lived like six weeks. I mean, it was terrible. And um, he was a football coach uh, at a high school. And so what that meant is he had a ton of uh, kids that he that he grew helped grow up right. They, he was the coach. They had a bond. The kids went on to college. They became lawyers, doctors, accountants, or whatever, uh, fathers, uh, whatever. And um, and at the funeral, he had about eight eulogies. Right, it was eulogy after eulogy of all these men. They were like, Coach Ken taught me this. Coach Ken taught me this. Coach Ken taught me this. And I and I had this revelation that I've spent my entire life. Um, reaching up to people and asking them for advice and and asking them how do I get ahead and they told me and it got me ahead um but I spent very little time helping other people get ahead and it was at that moment that I decided I need to start reaching down in addition to reaching up um or reaching down more actually and start helping other people uh pull up you know, I had this vision of a barrel of monkeys. You know, you know what a barrel of monkeys yeah, looks yeah, like? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I saw myself as a monkey, and I, I had been reaching up, and there was this long line of monkeys that were pulling me up, but there was no one underneath me. And I need to link some other monkeys underneath me. And, uh, and so then I started to. That's when I wrote my book. Um, and that's when I went on book tour shortly thereafter, I, uh, you know, started the podcast and started doing more and more things. I went to an organization called children of incarcerated parents. And I took on two, uh, Baltimore city, uh, kids that, um, that, uh, basically whose mother is in jail and whose father's non-existent and, uh, and started mentoring them and, and, you know, for instance, next week I'm I'm going to camp with them. Um, you know, we we've gone to basketball games, multiple basketball games. We do all kinds of shit together. You know, it's been four or five years since we started our relationship, and and I help them grow. I actually pay for their school in wow. private school. So you know, I just started doing things like that. I think you get the point. Yeah, yeah, no, I do. I think that's again. I I, th- I think people are going to hear this and go, oh yeah, sure, Pat can do that because he's got you know seventy lines of horizontal income, and the dude you know doesn't need to work. Um, but I, but I think I, 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 you know, I think anybody can do that. You know, I think anybody can give back. And let me ask you this, Pat, how has giving back like that to the community and seeing, you know, helping these youngsters grow and like maybe get on the right track, you know, maybe it's not for them. Success is just not getting in trouble anymore. I don't know. H- how has that helped you personally uh, as well as professionally? Well, um, you know, I think personally it's made me, um, not so up and down, you know what I mean? Like it used to be, I used to just be a fiend and the word fiend is interesting because they use the word fiend when they talk about a dope fiend, you know, that's what I call in Baltimore City. Look at that dope fiend, right? It just means like addict. Um, and I was a fiend for gratification, like getting, closing the listing, um, uh, having, uh, you know, making a fat check, uh, uh, you know, adding a new agent or, you know, having another killer month. And it was all very gratifying, but I didn't really have fulfillment, which was, which was, you know, help changing lives, right. Helping, having other people hug you and thank you. And, 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 and that's and say I've made a difference in their lives. And I, and I think that when I shifted from gratification to fulfillment, um, fulfillment is obviously Pro, it's it's less addicting like like uh you know if you if you close a deal you get a listing you got to keep doing it to feel good right but if you're helping other people and you've changed lives it, it's kind of has a much longer lasting effect if not forever you know in turn uh, forever even after you die so um so it, it helped me be more level and and less up and down like oh shit i lost that listing oh great i got that listing oh damn that that agent left me and went to a competitor into more of a, eh, it doesn't bother me. You know what I mean? Right, I mean, it's right, all right. good. Okay. All right. That's good. That's good. 
Um, now, let's, so, so, so <laughs> we've been t- like, we're doing this big expose on Pat Hyben. Uh, let's, let's talk about biz, man. Let's talk because I know, because that's what people are tuning in for. Um, and hopefully everybody's, I mean, I've gotten some stuff out of this. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, uh, y- you as listeners have gotten something uh, out of that where you can, uh, you know, benefit personally by, by helping somebody else. And I think that's, I think Pat, you know, that's part of, of, maturation when it comes to success. And I mean, I mean that, you know, I, I do similar stuff myself, but it, that, you know, I think that's when you, when you can truly help other people, um, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, get the, get their lives back on track or, track or whatever. I think, I think the circle of success starts to, starts to close itself because it's not, success is not about just, you know, having $5 million in the bank, you know, success is, um, um, well, well, look. Let's talk about let's talk about your group that you founded. That uh, you know that I'm fortunate enough to 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 uh, hang out with you guys every now and again. So Pat is a founding uh, member of a group called Go Abundance, and Go Abundance. Uh, I'll let I'll let Pat talk about it. But you know it, it, the whole group challenges you um, to to live a full life, and you know a full life in you know. Uh, business, your career, financial, your investments, your lifestyle, you know, your adventures, health and nutrition, uh, contribution, personal growth, f- friends, family. So it's, it's, and I think that's what success is, Pat. And I, I know you're going to agree because you're part of the stinking group that put it together. So talk a little bit about, uh, about Go Abundance. Sure. Well, Go Abundance is a men's uh, mastermind, which means that basically we're businessmen uh, or former businessmen who also like to do epic things in our lives. Uh, for instance, there's 24 of us that are going to Vietnam for two weeks in September. Um, there was 180 of us at Lake Tahoe, and Toby was there, uh, skiing and snowmobiling and playing broom ball and, and uh, doing epic things like that. We had Robert Kiyosaki from Shark Tank, the Canadian guy that's on the wait, phone. Wait, wait, right? wait. No, hold, hold on, Pat. Not to interrupt you. So you, you Robert Kiyosaki last year, and this year was I mean, Robert yeah, Herjavec. Herjavec. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Well, we, yeah. So we've had Robert Herjavec and Robert Kiyosaki. And um, anyways, come and hang out with us and that sort of thing. And we just get together several times a year. Uh, I think Toby went to Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and just went hiking with a bunch of guys. And and so it's 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 guys that like to get outside, like to do things, but also like to make money, like to contribute, like to uh, it, be healthy. Um, but we we have things. We have six pillars that we abide by, and it's all on the website gobundance dot com. You know, you can fill out an application there, but. Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're very excited. It's, we've got a great group of guys and, uh, everybody loves the benefits that, that come from it. Yeah. But I'll tell you, man, the reason why I wanted you to talk about it was this is because, you know, number one for everybody, you know, I was fortunate enough to, um, to, uh, David Osborne invited me to go and, and, you know, it, it was, it's, 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 it's an invite only group. You can't just show up and go, you need to, you know, uh, historically it's been an invite only group. But, you know, I thought I was doing great. I thought I was like, you know, this big successful guy. And I, and f- from most accounts, I am. But when I got the, and I'm, I'm telling you, Pat, you know, when I, got, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, but when I got all the, you know, new health, lifestyle, business, whatever, if I, as I looked at all those, pillars, I was like, okay, and I, and, and you know, and part of the process is to grade yourself. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm seven or eight here. I'm eight or nine here. And what I realized, man, what I realized was, um, really probably the most important pillar, which is friends, family relationships. Um, I was seven, eight or nine in every single pillar, man, uh, friends, family relationships. I was like a three and I was like, holy crap. Like I, that, I, I, I would have never put that together. Um, because I never thought about it in the way that it was framed. Um, and, and this year I, I'll tell you, man, I, I really realized, you know, what I need to do with my, you know, I have a great life with a great wife, but you know, I really realized that I don't value her time enough. And I figured out, you know, I've, and I have now a set of goals where I can, I can get better on that. Um, who put this, who was the one, is there, was there one person who was, who really sort of broke out these, these pillars and, 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 you know, the formula that to help people, uh, think through, um, and give yourself a grade. Was that you yeah, or was that David? Um, 
Well, it, uh, it was me, David, and Tim Road. I think together, the three of us for years, probably a decade, we just went on trips, just the three of us, because we didn't think anyone else would understand. Um, so just the three of us would go on trips, and um, and cu- we came up with these things, and we would just do massive accountability and massive goal setting and massive visioning. And um, finally, we, we kind of got sick of each other's stories or sick of each other and just decided let's let a couple other people in. And then we ended up letting three or four people come with us to Spain, and then the next year we let – you know, even more people come and more people come. And then, and, you know, all of a sudden it's at 180 people. It's like, damn, I guess um, more people do understand it than uh, we thought. So to answer your question, the three of us jointly came together, Tim Rode, David Osborne, and myself. Okay. Uh, so, so you know, you, you said massive accountability. And, you know, and, and, you know, I know David. David's been on the show. And, and he told me that you were, like, just an accountability monster for him. And, you know... Here's the thing, Pat. Everybody that listens to your show or listens to my show pretty much knows like how to build a business, right? I mean, we talk about all the stuff all the time. The problem is 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 execution. And even though people may know, I think I think execution is a problem because people don't know what to do. They may not know all the steps. How important in your mind, Pat, is having an accountability partner and and for example let's say that 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 I, I talked to you into being my accountability partner for valuing my wife more um how important do you think in terms of execution is it to have like a hardcore accountability partner um uh, working with you i i think it's all the difference in the world it's kind of like trying to lose weight without a scale mm. you know what i mean and you know the, the scale is huge because it's accountability. Right? It tells you whether it's working or it's not. And so, and accountability is the same thing. Either you're doing what you said you would do, or you're not. You know. So it's 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 a hundred percent of it. I think that's interesting. That's a great analogy. Losing weight without a scale. Um, that is great. Okay. So 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 how. How does someone – so they, everybody listening goes, yeah, that's right. Dang, I got to go get one of these guys. How – where does somebody find an accountability partner? And and more importantly, you know what? Well, before you answer that, how does accountability work? Because as I can tell you that that you know, I met a, a good friend in Tahoe, a guy named Merrick Canterman. I don't know if you know Merrick or not. Uh, but we've decided to for for us to be accountability partners together, and you know we've been on since Tahoe, which is a month or a month and a half ago. You know we've gotten on the, our, our phone calls, and they've really kind of turned into coaching sessions. Um, I'm more you know I'm coaching him on the stuff that he wants to 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 accomplish, and and I really realized our last call. I'm like, dude, this is not account what accountability I think looks like. So can you ca- kind of describe what that what accountability is and how to how to go about doing it if you once you find your your partner yeah absolutely um so it's got to be a two-way street toby meaning like the you both number one have to have goals and you both have to be willing to call each other out if you're not meeting your goals now the the big difference is you don't wait until the goals successful or unsuccessful you have to have a m- bunch of small goals to get to the big goal so let's just say your goal is to save a hundred grand um your small goals are I'm going to save $100 a week or or whatever it is or $100 a day or $100 a month, right? So your accountability partner has to be like, did you save that $100? And if you didn't, it'd be like, why? Why? What did you do? Oh, well, my wife and I went out and, you know, we got a limousine and da 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 And I'm like, well, okay, that you dumbass, you know, you should have found a cheaper date. Um, <laughs> you know, so the accountability partner has to be able to call you out on your small goals on a regular basis to ensure that you meet the big goal. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, okay. So, so basically we should come for, for this to work. So I should come up with a big goal. I want to save a hundred grand. And then I come up with, with, uh, smaller goals, right? So that's a hundred bucks a day, a week, month, whatever it is. Saving that. And then, and then how are you going to get it? Either you're going to spend less. Okay. You're going to earn more. And if it's earn more, how are you going to earn more? Well, I'm going to hand out 20 business cards a day or I'm going to cold call 20 people a day. Or if, if, if it's I'm going to save – if I'm going to spend less, it's well, I'm going to stop 
you know, our newspaper subscription. I'm going to stop cable. My $280 cable bill. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. So, so then, so, so other than, um, you know, again, David said, you know, told me on multiple occasions that you were just, you know, a guy that really, really held him accountable. I can like with, with, again, let's say that you were my accountability partner on this issue. And I go, yeah, you know, uh, Pat, I told you I was going to take my wife out at least once a week on a day. A date, a date or even once a month would be good for me. Um, and I didn't. And you go, Toby, you idiot. Like, that, don't you want that? Like, is it just you calling me names that's going to keep me, uh, you know, like, how, like there's got to be something deeper for me to, you, you don't, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's a great question. Uh, no, it's not about, I mean, uh, the name calling helps obviously. And, and guys tend to be better at that. Obviously than girls are, girls are nice to each other. Not that they can't be accountability partners, but that's why go abundance so far has just, you know, worked well with men. But, um, you know, um, <laughs> Maybe asking, well, Toby, why? You you know, there's probably a reason behind the reason, right? If someone says, well, Toby, really, why didn't you take her out? I mean, you had opportunity to. What, you know, you blaming it? Okay, and you say, oh, well, we couldn't get a sitter. Okay, well, that's BS, you know, right? Like, you know, I can tell you, go to care.org or whatever, and there's 15 sitters that live within a block of you. Um, You you, you know, kind of digging deeper and finding out really maybe you don't want to go out with you. Right. Right. Okay. No, that's good. I get it. I get it. Okay. That that's, um, and, and, and look at the end of the day, I, I think the other piece of this Pat is just, you know, it's, it's keeping your goals front and center and someone else going, Hey, didn't you, I thought you said you wanted to do that. Like maybe, you know, did you not want to do that? Like, you know, just keeping it front and center. Okay. That's perfect. Um, um, Okay, so let's move on from accountability. I, I had I, I might follow up because I had something I really wanted to ask you, and I I, I blanked on it when you when you when you the whole sitter thing because that's real in my case. Um, <clears throat> all right, business man. Um, let's look at the time. We're okay. So so, uh, in terms of 2016. Um, you know, you and I on your show, we recently talked and, you know, I talked about uh, broadcasting you know, I talked about the, what I feel is a new social currency, social capital, which is exposure. Um, do, do you have anything like that in 2016, where there's low hanging fruit uh, in terms of somebody building their business that that uh, you see that maybe not everybody else sees? Mm, that's a great question. Um Wow. And, you know, such of what everyone talks about is is a cliche. I'm sure you get it over and over again, yeah. right? Yeah, sure. So, you know, database, not not database, but, you know. Um, Fizbo's expired. Yeah, Fizbo's expired and, um, you know, lead generating. Uh, yeah. And anybody can tell you that. Uh, low-hanging fruit, man. Yeah. Um, what hasn't been said, right? What's right. new and exciting that's low hanging fruit? I don't know, man. I mean, uh, there's uh, th- there's a there's a million ways to get business, you know. And I think some of it uh, applies to kind of what you said on my show earlier was um, you have to go out and get it. Toby, Toby said on my show, I asked him what his favorite quote was. He said, fortune favors the bold. And I, and I think what fortune favors the bold does is it, 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 it encourages you, Hey, I got your back. You know, it's like God helps them. God helps those that help themselves, right? It's the same sort of thing. The universe will be with you. You put out the intention and the universe will, will envelope you with, yeah. with, uh, with success. If you, just move forward in that direction. So uh, it's the same thing. All three of those quotes or three of those ideas are the same thing. You have to go put yourself out there. You have to take action uh, in order to succeed. And I don't care what business you're in, but real estate especially, you know, if you're not out there handing out X amount of business cards, if you're not out there calling, if you're not out there trying new things to get business and doing new things to get business and being bold, like you said, then you're not going to succeed. I mean, you need to be bold in this business to succeed. You yeah. need to, to, to put it out there. And I think that, um, y- you know, there's a big discussion, a big debate going on now about 
uh, these companies that are coming out like Solo Pro and and List Me or something like that, where uh, sellers are going to be able to go online and just type in the their own photographs and their own list price and their own co-op commissions and um, and, and just have com- complete control of the seller MLS mm. the way that the National Association of Realtors and Move gave them complete control of the buyer MLS about a decade ago. Well, here it is a decade later and the seller MA- MLS is losing control. And, um, and, and, and the reason I'm bringing that up is because agents are going to have to be bolder. They're going to have to be stronger. They're going to have to be more assertive. And if they don't want to, then they can go work for one of these companies where they, you know, let the seller do all the work and they get 50 bucks or right. they get, you know, whatever. And, and then that's OK. They can make that choice just like an agent chooses to be a BPO agent versus an REO agent, you know, just doing BPOs for 50 bucks or doing REOs for a regular commission. Um, you know, there's a difference, big difference between those two agents and a BPO agent would say, I love doing BPOs. I never have to leave my house and put on clothes or take a shower. Um, where an REO agent says, you know, I love REOs and I love dealing with these huge banks. And then a traditional agent will just say, I hate both of those things. I love working with regular traditional sellers and buyers, but you know, so, um, so that's it, you know, we're going to have to be stronger and bolder. And I think that that is probably the theme for 2016 and beyond is yeah. you're going to have to work harder and uh, be bolder. Yeah, no, I, I, and, and I, think, I think the other thing too, Pat, is, is in addition to, to everything you just said, I think that you need to – uh, you need to contr- look. Uh, one of the guys at Go Abundance, I forget one of the one of the guys, one of the speakers. Um, he was talking about uh, technology, and he said basically um, his line. I don't know if you were if you were in that session, but his line was, if you can own the category, you are best suited to control it. And 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 when he was talking about category, he's like, oh, okay, SUV is a category, right? The, you know, the hybrid car is a category. And there's in, in the world, there's lots of different categories. And I think that as real estate agents or business people in general, you know, we need to own a category. So that might be waterfront houses, right? That could be, you know, then you could see that as a niche, right? Pat Hyben, the waterfront uh, 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 specialist, the water, the, the equestrian expert, right? If, if you can be that guy, differentiate yourself, own a niche and own that category, I think you're a lot better suited to when the world uh, and technology starts to, to disintermediate you from, you know, a 3% commission. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent, hundred percent. There's riches in the niches. Yeah. Riches in the niches. Okay. Um, uh, so let's talk a little bit about let's talk a little bit about to wrap up here. Um, um, your your building, you know, you're excited about this new product you're building. Um, talk to us a little bit about that because, um, okay, uh, here's where I want to start, Pat, and I want to get. I, I, I'm, I, I'm not. This is not a gotcha one because I, I'm sure you've put some thought into this. So you're currently building a product around listings. Now I want you to talk to us about that. You know, you don't have to give away. You know, your 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 secret sauce here. Um, but, but in my mind, a listing starts at that first call. And here's what I mean by that. Cause you know, again, we do radio, right? We have real estate radio experts. We put people on the radio and, and people will get a call on Monday from radio. And these are, these are super, super high quality leads. Um, but they get a call on Monday, but then the appointment is set for Saturday. Now, there is, there's a time period between Monday when the call comes in and Saturday when the listing appointment is scheduled. Now, I think the whole listing process, the heat map starts at that call because now you have this, this time period between Monday and Saturday to start to develop um, a relationship. You start to get closer to these people. Most people fail. They don't do shit you know, from Monday to Saturday, and then all of a sudden they think everything is at that that listing presentation. It's not. I think you win it or lose it from the time period when that call comes in to when that listing appointment happens. So I do want to talk to you. So tell us your thoughts around the product that you're building and getting listings. But if you could, I'd love for you to address that call to listing appointment time period. Yeah, that, that, that that's great. It's kind of uh, 
uncanny that you asked that question. And that this was not planned at all. I mean, this is really wild because literally right before we got on this call, I was reviewing the videos, um, kind of, uh, you know, sectioning them off. And there's a section called the call, right, which is taking the call from the consumer to schedule the appointment. Now, here's the thing about half of the agents or more than half of the agents I uh, sat down with let an assistant take uh, the intake sheet, right? And the other half wanted to do it themselves. Now, the ones that wanted to do it themselves had uh, a reason, and the reason was alludes to what you were just talking about, which is they wanted to start selling right then and there. They, they, and, and you'll see this in the videos. They'll, they, they start saying, Hey, you know, um, you, you know, I'm the best real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. Jeff Cohn is one of the agents. I'm the best real estate agent in Omaha, Nebraska. Here's why, blah, blah, blah. Rachel Adams is like uh, in Sacramento, California. I can't be beat because boom, 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 boom. I've sold this house on your street to the Joneses. Do you know them? And they feel that like it's it's important to start building rapport like instantly so that these people don't cancel. Yeah. Right. Yep. Even to the point of saying, now you promise not to decide before me. Right. Right. And the the interesting part is 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 uh, some of these agents. Clearly, I want to be the first one in, right? Because then they're going to get them to, for instance, Dan Greeb. Dan Greeb says, I want to be the first one in, and I'm going to get them to cancel their other appointments. Other people are like, I want to be the last one in, Jeff Cohn. I want to be the last one in because I want to be able to close them down, right? So, you know, it's kind of one of those you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Everybody has their opinions, and both both are right. It's very interesting to see it, though, that heat wave or whatever you want to call it, Um you know, some send out stuff ahead of time. Some don't send anything. Um, some send everything. Nate Martinez, he gives them everything, right? Like literally, he doesn't have to show up. You know, he gives them everything. The, the CMA, the net sheet, everything. They get all that, right? It, they, well, yeah, yeah. No, dude, sorry, not to not to bust in there. I'll tell you this. I'm, I'm, and I, I don't want to stop your role here, but you know, I'm working on this right now for our radio guys, and we're developing a package where they do, they do, and I'll tell you the process if you want to hear it. But at the, at the, but at the, the last piece of this process, right before the day before or the two days before the listing appointment is going to happen, the, these people are getting this leather bound package, and it has the contract completely filled out. So CMA's everything. So hey, here it is for your review. Um, you know, prior to you authorizing it, I'll see you tomorrow. But and a courier, a, somebody gets in their car, physically drives it to these people. So sorry, buddy, I, I keep going. I, I, yeah, no, it's all it's all relative, you know. And every the, the it's not consistent. It's not every agent does it differently. There's no right. There's no wrong. It's going to be whatever you feel works best for your market and your personality and their personality. I think, but. But I, I do believe deep down after watching eight of them, right, and spending hours and hours with each one of them, um, that it is a critical time frame from the call to the appointment. Yep. I mean, it's uh, – I agree. It is, it is critical and I don't think it should be taken for granted. I know personally I've lost listings uh, because I've had um, – you know, an assistant take it or we, uh, you know, my, my group is still called the Padheim real estate group. And, uh, people call, I had somebody call the other day, said, Hey, they met my mom once like 10 years ago and they wanted to talk to me. And, and, uh, when the person on my team, well, you know, Mike does all the listings now, Mike, you know, took over the business da, 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 and they're like, well, tell Pat, he can call us back or, and, and come out and talk to us or we're going to go with someone else. And I didn't even call him. Right. Because screw because that's not going to happen. Right. I mean, it's not going to happen. It's not how we work. Right. It's like asking a dentist to be an orthodontist. You know, we're asking a dentist to drive that lives in Baltimore to drive out to Vermont to to do some dental work. They're just not going to do it. It's just not um, it's not what they're willing right. to do. So. Okay. All right. So, 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 but okay. So to wrap this up and get to the, so you're saying number one, it's, it, it, I believe you're saying Pat, this process from call to appointment is a pretty critical time period for you to, for you to personally have interaction uh, with, with the prospect. Is that, is that accurate? 
Yeah, okay. yeah, I th- I think you know, it, but 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 everyone, not everyone does it. Right, not everyone does it. And again, I think that's great. I think that you can differentiate. It's not yourself. right or wrong. Okay, know? all right. Um, so so what 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 are you build? What, tell us about what you're building right now, and like what makes it makes it magical. Well, it's I I haven't found anything that really really hyper focuses on how to be an excellent listing agent. When I was first starting out, about three years in, Floyd Wickman had a class Sweat Hogs and. He spent a lot of time um, making the basics of how to get a listing known. And it was like a huge thing that no one in, in my first three years of business ever told me how to get a listing. It was all about how to deal with buyers. Hmm. And so I think that, that there's a lack in our industry of, of listing-focused education, you know? And um, – and, 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 Buyers are a byproduct, like I said before. Buyers are a byproduct. You start with listings. If you have listings, you'll get buyers. You'll get leads. You, one and only thing you need is listings. And I, th- I don't. And I think that most people don't get listings because they're afraid of of what happens on the listing appointment. And I think that if they learn how to do a listing appointment, a an extremely well done listing appointment, and they get some successes under their belt. Then they're never going to go back. They're going to they're going to see that this is the way to do the business, and that's the way I always did it. And I think that all successful agents that you interview and I interview are listing agents. Yeah, oh, absolutely, absolutely. You cannot get to scale with buyers. You you just you can't do it. And and and, and you know then you're for and, and, you know the only way to get to scale is then to have a crap load of buyers agents. And that that's a, all right. So we got to start wrapping up. I mean, hey, I'll tell you this, buddy. So that guy I introduced you to, um, Sharon, um, I recently sat down with him, him and his partner, and you should get these guys on your show. Uh, P- Peter Hernandez, they, they went, you know, they have a bunch of their building this big company. Um, I, I don't know if you talked to him, but they have like four or 500 agents. So good guy. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah he responded and I, I believe he scheduled the time. So. Okay. Well, look, I don't, I'm going to tell you this. I don't know how much you should tell him that I shared with you, uh, even though we're, I'm just sharing it on this recording and I'm not going to cut it, but he, they wanted to perfect the listing model him and, or his partner, Peter, personally went on 190 listing appointments with their agents. Um, they closed out of those 190 listing appointments, they closed, I want to say like 178 of them. Okay. And, and so, and, and every time they'd finish a listing appointment, uh, they'd go back and make a bunch of notes. So, so now they did almost 200 of these and they, they, uh, per these guys, they have diluted down the 10 most important things out of that is common theme, thematically, um, what to do on a listing appointment. That's what they teach their agents to do. And, uh, and everybody is killing it. And by the way, for everybody, that's the, the, this is a Southern California, um, brokerage ability. It's called TELUS properties. So uh, everybody can check it out. But again, for you, Pat, I think you should try to, I don't know if he'll tell you. I honestly don't because they're, they're keeping it pretty secret, but it's, it's worth for sure worth asking. All right, man. So listen, awesome stuff. Is there anything else that you want to share about that product you're building? No, I think that pretty much sums it up. You know, it's okay. going to be ready in another, you know, uh, uh, it's up to me to finish it. Um, uh, hopefully I'll be done within 60 days up and running. Uh, and if it works, I'm going to create more. I'm going to create a team building one. Awesome. Um, so yeah, re- so you sh- that's it. Yeah. You should create a recruiting one. That'd be good. One. That's, that's what everybody wants to know. All right. So, so everybody, um, everybody, I'm sure if you email Pat and we're going to get Pat's contact. In, con- sorry. Sorry. I just like. Just uh, whatever. Um, we're going to get Pat's contact info. I'm sure he will he will be putting together an interest a list. Uh, and because I, I did not talk to him about this, but I'm sure because you listen to this show and if you get on his interest list, I'm sure he'll give you a discount on it. Right, Pat? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Sure. Yeah, I'm going to sell it for 500 bucks. So I'll just go out on a limb right now and say, hey, I'll give uh, everybody listening to this podcast. Just type in uh, Toby's podcast. And uh, I'll give you, you know, 25% off. So Boom. I'll give you whatever okay. that is. Awesome. All right. So listen, I always ask for a book recommendation. You cannot say your book, Pat, because um, we've talked about it already. But here's the setup. I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book do I need to buy today? Wow. Um, you know, I think that uh, some of the books that changed my life were As a Man Thinketh. 
uh, by James Allen, and that's such a cheap book. It's like five bucks. Yeah. Uh, Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. I do The One Thing by Gary Keller. Good one. Uh, you could be, all three of those you can get for 25 bucks. Perfect. And and look, you could just, you know, all, all those are good. And I can tell you How a Man Thinketh. That's actually one of Tony Robbins's favorite books. So everybody, if you haven't read uh, any of those, uh, especially The One Thing, you get a free copy on us. Just go to audibletrial.com slash Live and uh, get a free copy. All right, Pat. Hey, man. Um, look, uh, I appreciate you coming on. I always encourage my listeners, if they've gotten anything out of this, um, I mean, you're a successful guy, Pat. You don't need to be, you know, uh, you, uh, so, what people need to know about you, if you, if you actually offered coaching, you know, you would charge something like $5,000 an hour. These people got a look into Pat Hyben's mind. They got coached by you for the last hour for free. So if they've got anything out of this, I always encourage them to reach out and say thank you to you. Pat, where can people find you? They can find me multiple places. Obviously, you could just Google me, but my email, if you'd like to send me a personal email, is pat at hyben.com, pat at hyben.com. You can email me there if you uh, like information on this listing product that I'm doing. And then, of course, it's uh, on iTunes, Pat Hyben interviews real estate rock stars, or just type in my name, Pat Hyben. Amazon, Six Steps to Seven Figures, or just type in my name. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm everywhere. So yeah. just find me. And, and, and by the way, on iTunes, if you want to check out Pat's show, all you got to do is look for this show, Super Agents Live, and it, Pat's show is always related. So if you, if you don't remember all the Pat, just, you know, Pat's show is related to our show. So if you're listening to this one, I'm sure you like that one. Pat, I'll be the first one to kick off the thank you train. Thanks, man. Thank you, brother. Have a great day. All Thanks right. for having me on, Toby. See you, pal. Let's go. Yeah. For those of you that want to know what we're all about, it's like this, y'all. This is 10% luck, 20% skill, 15% 